Hello YouTube, this is Corey Newman. Today I'm going to talk about radar history and the uh, Twin Lights Aircraft Warning Site 8A during World War II. In 1930, ultra high frequency radio waves were discovered. In the late 1920s, there were many public articles written about detecting objects by radio waves. In 1931, Colonel William Blair initiated Project 88, positioning, find, position finding by means of light. Here, light was used in the general sense of electromagnetic radiation, including infrared and the very short radio waves with line of sight transmission characteristics, i.e. microwaves. Some success was made with the detection of thermal radiation from aircraft engines, but Colonel Blair was soon convinced that the, the detection could be done using reflected microwave signals. Throughout the year of 1930, numerous technical articles on the subject of radio location were published, and in 1931, a ban of secrecy was imposed upon radar because it was considered an uh, an important national defense uh, it was considered important to the national defense of the United States. In 1933 the Signal Corps chose Fort Hancock Sandy Hook as well as the Coast Guard Reservation at Twin Lights Lighthouse in Highlands, New Jersey as, as a perfect test location for early thermal radar. Both locations were on government owned land the reason for the two nearly nearby locations was first to test in secrecy and to test whether the range of thermal detection was increased with height as well as their relative closeness to the Signal Corps laboratories at Fort Monmouth in Little Silver, New Jersey. Testing conducted throughout the testing was conducted throughout the summer and fall of 1933 and revealed accurate detection as at good ranges with the thermal method. As a result, the War, De War Department authorized this field of detection to be expanded to aerial targets and allocated $100,000 for its development. Testing and development continued in and around Fort Monmouth to include Fort Hancock on the thermal detection method through the summer of 1935. A series of tests were made in the early part of 1937. In February, the, the radar range obtained, obtained against Army bombers and Navy blimps was about 10 miles, with azimuth readings only, and with, with azimuth readings only, and those with an error up to 10 degrees. By March, tracking ranges had increased to 20 miles. In April, the azimuth and elevation antennas arranged to track together. Directional readings with three degrees were being obtained for both azimuth and elevation. A pilot's eye view of the proceedings was provided by a, mem by a member of the 1st Bombardment Squadron, General Headquarters, Air Force, Mitchell Field, Long Island, New York, who was at the controls of a B-10B bomber on May 11, 1937, on a series of experimental night flights over the Eatontown Highland Sandy Hook area where the detectors were set up. May 1937 is a turning point in Army technical history. What later became the SER-268, the U.S. Army radar was shown then to a number of important persons with such effect that it became one of the top military secrets of the nation. It was a short range radio locator for controlling searchlights. On May 18th, 19, May 18th and 19th, 1937, General Allison, Major General Archibald H. Sunderland, who was the Chief of Coast Artillery, and Brigadier General Henry Hap Arnold, at that time, who was the Assistant Chief of the Air Corps, watched a future SCR-268 show what it could do. 
A week later, the demonstration was repeated for Secretary of War Henry A. Woodring. Several senators and representatives from the Congressional Committees on Military Affairs and Major General Oscar Westover, who is the Chief of the Air Corps. This was a co the SCR-268 was a coast artillery set designed to point searchlights and then anti-aircraft guns at approaching airplanes. But an enemy bomber could only would only be five minutes away by the time the locator detected it. This is not enough time to get interceptors up into the air to meet the hostile aircraft. What the Air Corps wanted and immediately requested was a detector with longer range. The military characteristics formulated for an Air Corps set upon the Signal Corps recommend upon Signal Corps recommendations required that it be capable of an early warning range of 120 miles. On June 3, 1937, the Chief of the Air Corps, Major General Oscar M. Westover, proposed an operational specification for a long-range detector and tracking equipment. The requirement height and range was 40,000 feet and 50 miles, respectively. The, the latter being increased to 120 miles. From this request, the Chief of the Air Corps in 1937, there eventually evolved the SCR-270 and the SCR-271 radars. The si new signal aircraft warning company emerged with the first of the year, 19, with the first of the year of 1940. Having just seen the SCR-270 test at, Na at the Navisink Twin Lights, Secretary of War Henry Hines Woodring in November 1939 announced that a command would soon be set up in the northeastern part of the United States to prepare warning and defense against air attack. The new command would continue would coordinate Air Corps pursuit planes Coast Artillery Corps anti-aircraft guns and searchlights and Signal Corps detection and communications equipment. This was the first move to give specific characters specific character to the Aircraft Warning Service. On May 23, 1940, the Air Defense Command was directed to consider the establishment of seven detector stations along the shoreline of the North Atlantic coastal frontier. Tentative studies with the Army, which the Army had made, indicated that these stations would be established in the vicinity of Perry, Maine, Fort Williams, Maine, Highland Light, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, Montauk, Long Island, Montauk Point, Long Island, Navasink Light, Highlands, New Jersey, Fort Salisbury, Delaware, and Fort Story, Virginia. Three information centers were to be set up near Westover, Massachusetts, Fort Hancock, New Jersey, and Fort Monroe, Virginia. On May 28, 1940, the First Army issued General Order No. 28, which set up a board of three officers to select aircraft warnings to select sites for the Aircraft Warning Service. The sites visited in the First Army area were Perry, Maine, Fort Williams, Maine, Highland Light, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, Montauk Light, Long Island, New York, Navisink Light in Highlands, New Jersey, Fort Salisbury, Delaware, and Fort Story, Virginia. The sites were visited by the board on the periods of June 20th to June 22nd, 1940, and June 24th and 25th, 1940. On June 27th, 1940, the Board of Officers put together a listing of eight sites they had visited and recommended three more. In June 1940, the Signal Corps began training at Fort Monmouth for the Aircraft Warning Service. It was not enough training facilities, so the, aircraft, so the Signal Corps set up training facilities at Fort Dix and Drew Field, Florida. In May 1941, the first fighter command recruited civilian women to set up an information center 
in the telephone building at 210 West 18th Street for the New York region's fledgling Ground Observer Corps and Aircraft Warning Service. The 6th, 7th, 17th, and 19th floor were rented for office space and for the Information Center. The volunteers of the Ground Observer Corps were recruited from volunteer efforts of the American Legion. The seventh floor of this building held the operations board for the 1st Fighter Command and the New York Fighter Wing. On December 4, 1940, the Air Defense Command, in a letter to the North Atlantic Division of the Army Corps of Engineers, listed the detector sites for each information center. The Boston Information Center was to be tied with the following planned detector sites. Prescott, Maine, Cadillac, Cadillac Mountain, Maine, Amagantiaticus Mountain, Maine, Highland Light, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, Peak Hill, Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts, Montauk Point, Long Island, New York, by, by cable to Fishers Island. The New York Information Center was to be tied to the following planned detector sites. Montauk Point, Long Island, New York, Yapan, Long Island, and Atlantic Hans, New Jersey, which is also tied to the Philadelphia Information Center. The Philadelphia Information Center was to be tied to the following planned detector sites. Atlantic Hans, New Jersey, Staffordsville, New Jersey, Bethany Beach Detector, uh, Delaware. Bethany Beach, Delaware. The Richard, Richmond Information Center was to be tied to the following planned detector sites. Cape Cod, Virginia. On December 15, 1940, an SCR was set up at Montauk Point in New York. On December 4, 1941, the first aircraft warning company, less one SCR-270 section, left Fort Monmouth to operate the uh, radio detect to operate the Twin Lights radio detection station. This unit worked with the second operations company to organize and set up the New York Information Center and the early radar stations in the New York area. The men trained at Port Monmouth during the month of January and eight enlisted men were sent to Mitchell Army Airfield and in Suffolk, uh, Suffolk Air, Army Airfield and Sandy Hook. On December 6, 1941, the Twin Lights radar set 8A went online with an SCR-271 radar set, serial number zero. The Twin Lights site reported the radar at, at, to the New York Filter Center. The only other site on the East Coast that was operating on December 7, 1941 was Mount Cadillac, Maine, radar site number 2, which was operating a SCR-270B radar set, serial number 57. The next day, radar site number 7, Montauk, Long Island, New York was made operational with a uh, SCR-270B radar, serial number 39. On December 17, 1941, the Secretary of War hurriedly approved the listing of 14 radar sites to be set up from Maine to North Carolina, which were to be operated, to be operated on a 24-hour basis. The Twin Lights aircraft warning site was initially leased before being pur purchased in early 1943. In 1941, when sites were first selected, elevation and electrical performance were the sole criteria. Actual operation, however, showed that other elements must be considered for satisfactory con coverage. The Twin Lights radar platoon was originally the first reporting pl platoon of the 651st Signal Reporting Company, Frontier Aircraft Warning. The cadre was formed at Fort Dix and on February 25, 1942, moved to the site at Highlands, New Jersey. The mission was twofold. First, to provide early warning for the defense of New York, for the defense of the New York region, 
Secondly, to train replacement personnel in the operation and maintenance of the SCR-270 and SCR-271. When the first platoon arrived at Twin Lights, they had two primary problems. The two, uh, two, uh, there were two officers and 45 enlisted men who were responsible for the uh, tactical use of the SCR-271A that was already on site. The 4.4 .4 acres of the property of the Twin Lights radar site was approved by the War Department on July 3rd, 1942. On July 2nd, 19, July 12th, 1942, it was stated by the Army Corps of Engineers that the Twin Lights AWS Site 8A was to have housing for four officers and 62 enlisted men, and that the New York District Engineer was to begin work but stated, stated a caution that construction should be initiated until construction should not be initiated until the necessary rights of entry had been accomplished or until layout plans had been approved by the commanding general, First Air Force, Mitchell Field, New York. The housing was to cost $24,600 to build. On July 23, 1942, in a, letter, in a letter by Benjamin H. Trask to the Army Corps of Engineers, North Atlantic Division, following up on a telephone conversation, asking permission, uh, stating that Julia H. Asking permission, stating that Julia H. Trask uh, permit 53 soldiers to pitch their tents on certain property owned by her at Highlands, New Jersey, adjacent to the Highlands Lighthouse for a period of two months. In August 1942, uh, the status of the construction of the aircraft warning sites report, uh, reported, which stated that aircraft warning site AA was a semi-fixed site, and that the layout plans and es lay that the layout plan and estimates were 100% completed. The construction of housing was not started, but the contract was awarded. It was estimated the construction completion date was October 12, 1942. On September 15, 1942, the 651st Reporting Company of the 608th Plotting Company were combined under General Orders No. 16 of the 1st Fighter Command on September 10, 1942. And the platoon became the first reporting platoon of the 608th Signal Company Aircraft Warning Regional. This change, however, did not make any substantial difference in the function of the unit. In December 1942, there, there were changes that were far more reaching. On the 18th of December, all of the original personnel except for one officer and two enlisted men were transferred to an overseas unit. Replacements were quickly obtained from the 501st Signal Aircraft Warning Regiment and the 502nd Signal Aircraft Warning Regiment and the 551st Signal Aircraft Warning Battalion, all from Fort Dix, but it was necessary to rebuild the whole platoon. Nevertheless, operation was, operations were continued as well as could be expected. Also in December, the SCR-270B was replaced with an SCR-271D, which was situated in the lighthouse itself in storage. The unit was placed in regular operation and the old SCR-271A was henceforth used as a standby station. This change resulted in substantial improvements in operation. By January 14. 1943, the organization of the platoon was virtually complete. The personnel had become familiar with their various functions and the scope of the troops. Troop training could be broadened to include more general aspects of soldiering as well as more technical and operational instruction. Under the authority of the order issued by the 1st Fighter Command on May 30th, 1944, the radar sites at Manorville, 
Pike Beach and Twin Lights ceased tactical operation at midnight on May 31, 1944. On May 31, 1944, the command of the 608th Signal Aircraft Warning Unit was transferred to the 104th Army Air Force Base Unit, or AAFBU, under the command of the New York Fighter Wing. The command of the 104th Army Air Force Base Unit was short-lived. On June 9, 1944, the first fighter wing published General Orders No. 23 concerning, concerning the di disbandment of the 608th Signal Aircraft Warning Company Regional, which was received at company headquarters on June 11, 1944. The next day, a platoon, platoon commander's conference was held. On June 17, 1944, Another platoon commander's conference was held, and the question as to the disposal of war, dro war dogs was brought up. On June 24, 1944, the Roslyn Information Center began in full operation under the 164th Army Air Force Base Unit. The Roslyn Information Center now controlled all the radars from Bar Harbor, Maine to Palermo, New Jersey. On June 29, 1944, the signal office of the 1st Fighter wing, wing informed the 608th Company that all enlisted men would be transferred except for 10 at each of the three inactive sites and four at the filter centers. The 10 enlisted men at each site would be attached to the 104th Army Air Force Base Unit. The complete decommissioning of the unit was completed on July 10, 1944. At the end of June 1944, control of radar sites was transferred from the information and filter centers to fighter control centers. The Twin Lights AWS Site 8A SCR-271 serial number 1 was changed to serial number 00 located to, next to the lighthouse, and the SCR-271 serial number 21 was changed to serial number 0. On February 26, 1945, the SCR-271 serial number 0 was set to be transferred to the Amagantiscus Mountain in Maine, AWS Site Number 4 manned by the 551st Signal Aircraft Warning Battalion due to a fire on that site on February 9, 1945. The post engineer at, ne at nearby Camp Langdon, New Hampshire, was asked by the 164th Army Air Force Base Unit Commanding Officer to conduct an initial investigation of the fire. The order was given three days before on February 23, 1945. On March 3, 1945, the First Air Force received a teletype message from Headquarters Air Technical Service Command, which, which was then forwarded to the headquarters of the First Fighter Command concerning the dismantlement, dismantling of the SCR-271 serial number 0 at the Twin Lights Lighthouse. Headquarters ATSC instructed the Middletown ATSC, Middletown, Pennsylvania, to get the, to get the Rome ATSC to submit a requisition form for the necessary components and parts to repair the damaged SCR-271 at AWS site number 4. Excess SCR-271Ds were in stock at the Lexington ATSC and that it was advisable to supply a new SCR-271 and spare parts to AWS site number 4 instead of the SCR-271 instead of the SCR from <coughs> AWS site 8A. On March 20, 1945, the dismantling of the SCR-271 at the Twin Lights site AWS Site 8A was begun, and the project was set to be completed on April 21, 1945.
During April 1945, Watson Laboratories in Red Bank, New Jersey, was interested in leasing the Twin Lights AWS site and making it into a research field station. On September 4, 1945, Major J.W. Marchetti of the 4161st Air Force Space Unit Watson Laboratory called the first fighter command about setting up a visit of officers to the Twin Lights AWS Site AA on September 7, 1945. On January 26, 1946, the transfer of Twin Lights AWS Site to the Watson Laboratories became effective with the understanding that the station would be returned to the, Air Fo to the first Air Force in case of emergency. The radar set AN-CPS-6 is an air transportable radar for search or ground control intercept using two directional antennas to form a V-beam which initiated by the Army Air, F Air Force through the Signal Corps. The project was transferred to Watson Laboratories on February 1st, February 1st 1945. There was a contract with the Radiation Laboratory and Watson Laboratory to produce an initial six models of the ANCPS-6B radar, which was later amended to include two more. The radar set ANCPS-6, serial number 6, was located at the Twin Lights area and installed and scheduled to begin operation on July 15, 1946. It was mounted on a 25-foot uh, 20 tall tower with an additional 12, 12-and-a-half-foot tower extension uh, was, was uh, used. Uh, serial number 7 of the ANCPS-6B was installed at, field, at uh, Watson Laboratories Field Station at Lees, Leesburg Army Airfield in Florida. And serial number 8 of the ANCPS-6 radar was installed at a field station at Wayside, New Jersey. The Wayside field station was located on the main side of Earl, we Earl Naval Weapons Station. A radio relay system was set up between Watson Laboratories, Twin Lights, Oakhurst, and Wayside. Each site had four antrc Dash six radios. In order to, to permit investigation of radio techniques by the engineering personnel at Watson Laboratories. On January 2, 1948, Headquarters Air Defense Command at Mitchell Field, New York, wrote a letter to Chief of Staff U.S. Air Force in Washington, D.C., in the Pentagon, requesting that the radar site the ANCPS-6 radar equipment and associated base camp on government-owned property located at Twin Lights, New Jersey be transferred to Headquarters Air Defense Command effective June 15, 1948. On April 30, 1948, control of the Twin Lights Field Station was transferred to the Air Defense Command.